back live from the Tech Lounge studio here at the Intel booth in Hall 3 of Mobile World Congress 2015 in Barcelona, of course. Um, I have Eric Reed over here, director of the Lenovo Global team at Intel. Yes. How are you doing, Eric? We're doing great. Having a really good Congress. Yeah. So is, is this your first day here on the show floor? No, no. I uh, got here on Sunday and then I've been here all week. There you go. Yes. So it's no more jet lag for you, no right? More you jet saw lag. the whole show already. Yes. Almost. So that, this is a busy one again. Right? It is. And it's, there's it's a cool. lot of really cool announcements, cool products all over the place. Yeah. We're excited. And, and, and you've, had a, you've had a couple of uh, announcements over here at Intel. We have. Of course, also, your partners had a couple of announcements, and are we going to talk about one? Absolutely, we are. So this is uh, the P Lenovo P90 phone that they uh, announced at Mobile World Congress. Yeah. So it's a brand new smartphone uh, that we partnered with Lenovo to bring to market. Uh, it has the Intel quad-core processor and a five-mode 7260 mo uh, LTE modem in it. Okay. So, so, so tell us a little bit about um, um, uh, which, which Intel Atom is in there. Is this the Bay Trail? No, no. This is uh, Moorfield. So this okay. is specifically designed for low power consumption. There you go. It's got quad core uh, for great processing, and it's got uh, graphics that are just outstanding. So gaming, video, photography, anything you want to do on this device, it's really a brilliant device. We're super excited. Of course it's not Bay Trail. We were just talking about <laughs> the tablets before. I was just still in my tablet zone. Uh, yes, yes. Sometimes, you know, it's just too had a problem to switch back to the smartphones right yeah. now. Well, that's one of the cool things, uh, that we've got architectures that are optimized for tablets and architectures yeah. that are optimized for phones. Lenovo's using both, and this one we talked about was with Morfield. Exactly, I like that. Uh, I love the idea of optimization, yeah. because um, sometimes I have the feeling um, they are also there's a lot, also a lot of silicon out there that, for example, is coming from a smartphone form factor, and they're squeezing it into a variable, yes. and then we're ending up with battery life that is just nowhere near Near what I would call a variable. Yeah, at all. exactly. So you want to you want to think about the applications and what the users really want to do, and then have processors and SOCs designed specifically for that. And I think that's one of the really cool things about working for Intel, is we have the ability to target products for different segments of the market and optimize for power or optimize for performance or a blend of both, depending on what people want. So what we have right now here with the P90, and just just to give you guys in general a little bit of an idea of what Lenovo is doing on the smartphone market. Um, in China, we have roughly around 50 smartphones from Lenovo yeah. on the market, and no one knows about this here, but it's happening right now. They also yeah. acquired Motorola, they which did. is very interesting. Makes them the third biggest smartphone manufacturer in the world behind Samsung and Apple. Exactly, and they've been growing really strongly. So we're super excited to partner with them, and we think there's a great future for us jointly working together to bring products to market that consumers are really going to love. Lenovo on the, for the notebook sector uh -huh. is a longtime partner of yeah. Intel, uh, completely committed to Intel uh, on, on, on this form factor. And now we see more and more devices also, mobile devices um, yep. from uh, from Lenovo coming with your silicon. Mm -hmm. So um, tell, tell, us a little, tell us a little bit more about this. So this is, a, I think it's a five inch device. It's right? a five inch device. Uh, it's got a quad HD screen on it. So brilliant screen. Ooh. So you can see it, oh, no. take a look let, at that. Let me, let me try to hold this. See if you can hold camera. it right. <laughs> let me make it a little bit brighter. Yeah. Um, here we go. Let's switch off the auto. Here we go. Yeah. So let's you can zoom see that in on the this. lights. Yeah. So five inch quad HD uh, yep. screen, which in terms of pixel density should shoot it straight away. Yep. Into at least the top three, if not the number one. Right. Now. I'd say it's in the top three range right yeah. there. It's Thirteen megapixel camera on the back, so really good uh, image quality for taking pictures, which everybody loves. The other thing I love about it is I use this all day. I'm on my phone constantly doing email, uh, checking texts, running apps, and I get all day battery life out of it. So it works brilliantly. It's great. Yeah. It's very thin. Um, the build quality is something. And you know what? I'm not sure if you can see this on the screen right now. When you look at this screen, um, this is kind of floating display that they've yeah. put on top of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I, ju I just love the look and feel of it. It has yeah. very, very you see this? Um, oh, hold on. Oh, you need to unlock? I, I just... Oh, no. We'll be good. <laughs> okay. It's very thin bezels. 
Right. Yeah, so you gotta, and, and that's what people want. They want to see the full screen. They don't want to see a yeah. border around it. So we worked really hard with them to uh, engineer it the right way. And the resolution is absolutely amazing on this screen. Yeah. Right. Um, to, to, to see what, what, what Lenovo is doing right now on, on, on smartphones. Mm -hmm. And once again, you know, not a lot of people were aware of this. Yeah. Um, yes, they've been also uh, doing our tech launch at IFAR in Berlin last year. And even the year before, we've been already showing Lenovo, uh, the Lenovo Vibe X, for example. Right. We've been showing smartphones from Lenovo. And, um, but to see where they're coming from and what they're doing right now, I mean, they're going all high-end with this. Yeah, well, what's great with Lenovo is that they're going to have a full range of products from the entry segment to the yeah. performance segment. Yeah. And with Motorola, now they've got the added capability and, and reach in the marketplace. So their brands, between the Lenovo branded products and the Motorola branded products, allow them to address a huge part of the marketplace. Uh, and it's super exciting again to be working with them and to bring these to market. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about the pricing of this device? Uh, I'm going to leave the pricing to I Lenovo. <laughs> they, they're the customer. They get to disclose pricing. Uh, any ideas about the availability? Uh, availability <laughs> should be, and they've talked about this, availability should be kind of into March, early April time frame. You know I have to ask this question. You do. <laughs> I know. I'm, I, I'd be disappointed if you did. <laughs> I mean, this, this is an absolute beauty. Uh, yeah. Well, what, what I would guess... Right. This is a guess, uh, not a prediction at all. Um, this should be in this uh, five, six hundred dollars range. If they can get this under six hundred dollars, this is this is a win with a display like this. I think you'll be looking at a winner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is we've already had this. Um, um, the, the new Dell tablet uh, mm -hmm. that came out in January, which is the thinnest tablet on the market, yep. uh, based on on now finally the Intel Batrel, yeah, um, and with the 3D camera with wheel sense technology, an amazing piece of design. Mm -hmm. and, and again, and then we're also looking at uh, what Lenovo is now doing with the P90. It's quite interesting to see um, where where the X86 platform ends up. In, 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 in like high-end devices, design-wise yeah. devices, and so finally we have a choice on this market. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that's been really exciting. People questioned for a long time, could Intel architecture get into a smartphone device where they thought, okay, yeah, you're great on performance, we're known for that, but your power and your power efficiency isn't where it needed to be. We've shown with devices like this that we can have all-day battery life and you're meeting all the requirements uh, that the market wants. The other thing that we've worked really hard with Lenovo on is as application compatibility. People thought, hmm, you know, all the applications are written for ARM. We've made sure that 99% of the applications, or more than 90% of the applications, run brilliantly on these types of devices. So yeah. the compatibility isn't an issue either. I think we've addressed, you know, performance, power, and compatibility, mm -hmm. and those are the three things you need to make sure you're going to be successful in the mobile marketplace. Yeah, we've had Doug Fisher over here from the yeah. software group. Uh, we were talking about, you know, the challenges yeah. um, to really, because like three days ago over here at Mobile War Congress, when it was starting the An Android initiative, you know, yes. people were kind of concerned. Like, Will they be ever compatible? Can X86 make it into the Android world? Yeah. Um, last year, over 40 million X86 tablets got shipped. Exactly. Right? And a huge chunk of them were running on Android. Uh, probably 75% were running on go. Android. Yeah. So um, you didn't only announce something, you actually delivered. Yeah, and that's what's been great, again, with devices like this, where we can partner with our customers and give them choices on operating systems. So Lenovo has launched Android tablets with Intel architecture. They've launched Windows tablets with Intel architecture, Android phones. So we've really we give our customers the choice of the operating environments they want to they want to bring to market for their customers. That, that's what only we can do with x86. Yeah, absolutely. And to see um, to to see how competitive it is. Yeah. Also in terms of the price ranges. I mean the ne the next generation of Intel Atoms that we saw. Yeah. Um, 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 two days ago. Yes, two days. Yeah, ago. two no, days no, ago. Sorry. Yes. Two days ago, when Wednesday. I'm a little bit confused. It's okay. Because the second day of the stream is the third day of Mobile War Congress. I remember because our CEO announced it, so I got to pay attention if our CEO is talking. Okay, of course. Yeah. Um, we, we, we actually got announced uh, that we're going to look at smartphones starting at $119. 
Yeah. Uh, we, we actually had even $99 <laughs> Intel Atom based smartphones already in the market. Yeah, and so again, with a device like this, it's a quad core processor and yeah. it's got a discrete modem. It's for the performance segment. It's going to be brilliant for that. Yeah. But now yeah. we get to go after other parts of the market with integrated SOCs that include LTE integrated SOCs. So those will be entry and value price points. And so now, again, a full range of products uh, from Intel and hopefully we'll get a full range of products from Lenovo. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm, yeah. I, I'm sure about this because I mean, these guys really built up some momentum. Yeah, I remember those days. I know it has nothing to do with smartphones right now. Yeah, um, I remember those days when Lenovo bought Intel, and all the comments that you saw all no, over the no, newspaper. They, they didn't buy Intel; they bought uh, IBM. So, <laughs> Unless I needed a oh, different. Oh bag. my! Oh my goodness! When <laughs> I don't, sorry, I, I don't know how I made this up. Yeah. But that was a good one. That well, was don't a good quote one. me on this. Yeah. That, 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 that's a statement. Yeah. Um, they need to be very, very successful to do this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when, 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 when Lenovo bought the notebook and PC business right. from yeah. IBM. Yep. And you saw all those comments in the newspapers, on the tech websites. And yeah. Everybody was saying, oh my God, what's happening now to the ThinkPad brand? Right. And what happened is, they evolved, yeah. right? They developed this, and it's still pretty much the best notebook. Well, they've shipped. I don't know if you know this. They're going to. Sh they will have shipped this year over a hundred million ThinkPad notebooks in total. And so, when Lowe puts their mind to something, they are all in and completely focused on it. And so, they're all in and focused on smartphones. And I, I'm absolutely convinced they're, they're going to be a leader in the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Still the um, biggest notebook manufacturer yeah. in the world. So they turned this brand into the biggest notebook brand of the world. Um, they delivered on a production and build quality. Yeah. And they're also delivering the same philosophy and strategy now onto um, a smartphone form factor. Exactly. And so they're just going to keep going. And it's uh, going to be really exciting to see what they do next year. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, we've already talked about you know what you, what what we can see right now um, with with an X eighty six, and especially with display technology, because yeah. this is also something um, that, that that takes a lot of GPU performance. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, you just can't get a real entry level SOC in there to handle. I mean, a Quad HD display. Yep. It's roughly about 70% more pixel than you have yeah. on a 1080p screen. Exactly. Right? And this really, really needs some decent GPU performance. And well, plus, you still, you still need to manage your battery life on yeah. this. This is a challenge for the engineers. It is. But you know, that's where we work really hard. So we had uh, probably about 90 engineers from Intel working with the Lenovo engineers, the equal numbers, to do all of the power optimizations, all of the application optimizations to make sure that when, you're, when you've got a display like that, you're going to want to use it. You're going to want to play games. You're going to want to surf the web. Yeah, you're yeah. always working, always using it. And the battery life has got to be brilliant. It's got to work all day long or people aren't going to take the device. And trust me, I've been using this. This is my personal phone that I use yeah. for work. Yeah. I use it worldwide. Um, and it's great. I love it. And you wouldn't use it if you can't survive a day with it. I, I can't be without my phone. That, that, that is a sweet spot, right? Yeah. And even though that we are that smartphones condition us to yeah. we charge them in the night, you still need to make it through the whole day. And our days are long. I'm pretty sure about this. Uh, yeah, I start at <laughs> 7. Usually I end at about 10 at night. Yeah. And, and I'm on the go. So I don't have time to stop and, and plug in. I, I, my phone's going to last with me when I start and when I stop it during the day, right? By the way, that was another challenge uh, for Intel uh, um, to, to deliver a piece of silicon because, I mean, when we're looking at the portfolio that Intel had uh, in terms of uh, um, CPUs and um, SOCs before they really entered the mobile market, right? Yeah. In terms of performance, they were starting here. Yeah. Right? Yes. And in terms of battery life, well, compared to the performance, uh, this, this, this ratio, performance per watt, they were also there, right? right. Which is a good thing, yeah. first of all. It's based on this amazing performance performance of the Core i platform, for example, yeah. and, and the Core to do and what we've had before, right? And now they needed to get this down, right? Yeah. Uh, the performance uh, down to, to, to a level and a platform that was starting here, yeah. right? And find the right ratio. Well, that's one of the things that, that we really worked hard on. And it was a lot of work at the SOC level to optimize how you do power management, to be able to turn blocks on and off, blocks being certain parts right, of the right. SOC, to do that fine-grained power management. And then what we did is we have 
I'd say probably several hundred Android engineers that are doing optimizations at the OS level to again, make the power management even better at, the, at that level. And then we take advantage of our process technology. So this is a, on the 22 nanometer process and then we're gonna go to the 14 nanometer process very quickly. And so again, we get better power and better power efficiency when we make that jump. So again, a lot of fun stuff that's gonna come into the market in the next couple of years. This is what you just announced, the four yeah. nanometers atoms are coming. They are, they'll be in market, uh, I would say middle part of this year. And once again, it's quite interesting to see the other, uh, to see some competitors with 40 nanometers that just got announced over here and they yeah. got squeezed into devices that cost six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Oh, you'll, you'll have these devices in much lower price points. Well, we were talking, I think the entry level was $119. Yeah, right, yeah that the absolutely. Over here. And we, again, we're talking about 40 nanometers. That means, of course, um, efficiency and the performance will be different compared to the previous generation. Yeah, you know, it, just, just, it just keeps getting better. And, we can, and what's really cool is we can get better both on performance and on power. So it's, it's the best of both worlds. You're not giving up one or the other as we make the, the jumps from node to node to node. And you'll see 14 nanometer phones next year as well. So it's going to be really cool. So we're also going to see additional Lenovo phones with X86? I hope so, but, I'm going to let, <laughs> but again, I'm going to let my customer announce their products. <laughs> I like that. I, thought, I, th I think it was a little bit of a wink, right? yeah. just to say, you know, there, there is more to come uh, from this. Yeah. Very, very exciting times. Eric, Great. thank you so much. Thank you. And, and guys, if you want to check this out, it's all over the web right now. It's the Lenovo P90. Yeah. Um, amazing device. And once again, this is probably, in terms of pixel density, the leading display that is available on the market. Um, not in a prototype, but, but a in a device product. that right. is going to ship very, very soon. Yeah. Eric, thank you so, thank much, you for, so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to have a little break of like some five minutes or so. And um, then we're going to have our next interview. Let me quickly take a look at this. I have so many slots for today. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's going to be really interesting. Uh, we have um, Stefano Mosconi over here, and um, he's a CTO of Yola. Yola, an alternative operating system, really interesting story because, you know, what this has a lot to do with what I did uh, together with Intel and what I was covering in the past. Um, a lot of you guys still remember Migo. Migo was the merger of the Nokia MIMO and the Intel Moblin. Yep. And then we had one device in the market, which was the Nokia Online, which I still love. It's still in our office. Yeah. An amazing device. It's an amazing operating system. Now, the Yola guys is basically the team of Migo um, developing um, a smartphone OS, which is called Sailfish OS. And now they also rolled it out onto a tablet a form factor and they crowdfunded this tablet on Indiegogo. They raised way over two and a half million US dollars right now. It's still happening and we have this device. It looks gorgeous. The operating system looks gorgeous and you can meet uh, Stefano Mosconi, their CTO, together with me here and we're going to talk about this tablet. So I'll see you very soon. <laughs>